The days of doing a home buying process out of order, yeah, those days are over. Welcome to the show that takes up no more than five minutes of your time, but could help you gain massive real estate knowledge. It's Five Minutes in Real Estate with best selling author Shane Willis. All right, so welcome to this week's show. We actually are going to be talking about a home buying process. I kind of looked back through some of the other um, podcasts that we had and realized that uh, I've actually never walked through on a podcast what the home buying process is. Found a nice little nice little infogram online somewhere and went, you know, this would probably make a good episode, especially in today's market because we've we've seen a little bit of a change has happened since the uh, crash, where you know the last two or three years. You actually could go out and kind of reverse step one and step two, and be okay. Uh, and there's a lot of buyers that are still out there trying to do that. I've got I get calls every week. I still get them um, every week saying, "Hey, you know, we have we want to go look at a house. Well, have you got a pre-approval yet? No, we want to do that after we find the house. Well, that's not necessarily how this works anymore. So I wanted to create just a quick episode on what our process is going to look like if you're going to buy a home. This is what the process is. Following each step, not skipping a step, will make it a lot smoother and avoid a whole lot of heartache. So the very first step is you're going to want to get your pre-approval. You're going to want to talk to the bank first. You're going to want to have your W-2s, your pay stubs, your bank statements, your tax returns, all of that stuff because you want to get the pre-approval from the bank first. Now, I hear some arguments all the time because that's a little bit of work, gathering all that stuff up, is, well, I just want to go look at the house, then if I like it, I'll go through that. No, that's not how this works, and let me tell you why, as a buyer, you don't want that to work. I have already seen it. It just happened two weeks ago to one of the buyers who had told me they got a pre-approval, said they were going to bring it with them to the showing, showed up at the showing, well, I forgot it. They were basically lying to me. And... They fell in love with the property. Absolutely fell in love with the property. So we went to write an offer on the property. I, I wrote the offer and the seller said, well, where's your pre-approval letter? Because it's contingent on financing. And I had asked for the pre-approval letter. The buyer kept telling me, well, I'll get it to you, no problem. And finally it came down to it and they didn't have a pre-approval letter yet. Now here's, here's the sad part. Since they didn't have the pre-approval yet, the seller rejected their offer saying you know come back with a pre-approval letter we'll probably negotiate so it took them a day or two to gather all those information go meet with the banker talk to the banker a lot of the pre-approvals can be done over the phone but we needed to get this stuff this information from the lender so they got it all to the lender they got the pre-approval letter we came back resubmitted the offer with a pre-approval letter during that day or two time that they were working on getting their pre-approval another offer had come in and the seller had already accepted it. That happened a lot back in the heyday. You would always get your pre-approval first. But I think we've kind of gotten spoiled to, well, there's such a glutton of properties that we can go look at the property and then when we find one, we go through and get the pre-approval process. No, that's not how it works anymore. And there's not a glutton of properties anymore. We have a lower inventory still to this day. And I, I suspect that will continue for a while. So follow the steps the way they're meant to be followed. Go get the pre-approval first. That's also going to help you know what type and how much of a property you can get so you don't fall in love with a $300,000 property when you can only afford $250,000. Make sense? So get your pre-approval first. Then we're going to find a home. Then we're going to make the offer. The offer can negotiate back and forth. I've seen negotiations last two weeks. Do they normally last two weeks? No. They normally can be handled in a day or two. State of Florida contract states that most of them start. You got two days to respond. If there's a counter, there's another two day clock. But that doesn't always mean you're going to take that much time. So we make our offer. Then we then you're going to go make sure you get all the other documentation you need, the updated bank statements, everything else over to the lender. All right. Once we re once we sign the contract, there are a couple of inspections that are going to be off that are going to be ordered at that time. Your lender's going to order the appraisal. This obviously all changes with cash, but we're talking about with a loan. Your lender's going to order the appraisal. That's going to have to be paid up front. Most lenders will not accept that being paid at closing. 
That's going to be have to be paid up front. You're going to have to pay your earnest money deposit. That's paid up front. That has to be deposited with whatever institution, whether it's the closing attorney, closing title company, or uh, one of the real estate agents' escrow accounts, whatever. So we got to pay those two up front. Then you're probably going to order a home inspection. I highly suggest a home inspection. I highly suggest a termite inspection. Some will require it. And then we're going to find out if the seller has a survey. The seller has a survey that can be used, then they're obligated to give it to us. Now, can be used is the optimal word because if they put a new fence or put a new yard building or put a pool in or anything that changed the dynamics of the land, it can't be used. If it's not the original with the raised seal, it can't be used. So we as the buyer now have to go buy another survey. That also is where we get our elevation certificate for insurance if we need to. So all of this gets ordered at one time. Uh, the, the lender's taking care of the appraisal, and usually the buyer's agent's helping you order the other inspections. So that takes about two to three weeks. In the meantime, your lender's going to be asking you for, again, updated bank statements, anything else that an underwriter may need. There may be something on your credit from five years ago where they need what, what we call in the industry an LOX or a letter of explanation. This is where you kind of focus with them. Now, big, big thing here. Don't do this. What, what I'm about to tell you, don't do these. Don't make any big cash deposits to your bank account. If you're getting something, don't make a big cash deposit. That's going to raise a red flag. Now you're going to do an LOX to explain to your lender where it came from. Don't make any large purchases on your credit cards. Don't go out and buy the $8,000 cruise. Don't do that and put it on your credit card. Well, I'm financing. Don't put that on the credit card. No purchases during this, per during this process. Don't go co-signing a loan for anybody. Well, little Johnny's going to get his car, and I'm going to co-sign for him because he just graduated college. Not right now. Little Johnny's just going to have to wait till you buy the house. Don't go changing your bank accounts. And don't apply for new credit cards. That changes your debt-to-income ratio, which could change. Even if you don't put anything in it, guys, that changes your debt-to-income ratio, which could change your approval. So don't do any of that stuff. All right? All right. Inspections come back. We take a look at it, depending on what type of contract we, we wrote. We may negotiate some repairs to be done or not. Appraisal report comes back. That's obviously uh, a big one because almost every contract that I write is contingent upon an appraising. If it doesn't appraise, then we're going to have to write a negotiation back. But with that appraisal report and everything else that you've given to the lender, once they get the appraisal report and all the bank statements and everything else, now they can finalize underwriting meaning they can underwrite your loan to make sure that it meets your criteria. That shouldn't take more than about a week. Then they're going to submit out uh, what's called a commitment. So there's a difference between a pre-approval, an approval, and a commitment. The commitment says, yes, we've reached all these. There are some stipulations that still need to be met, but we've reached everything, and we as a lender now give you a commitment. Once we have that commitment, we're obligated to give that over to the sellers to show that, yes, we have a commitment now. Um, in the meantime, you're going to be getting a title report from the closing attorney or the title company that takes care of everything to make sure you get clean title. If there's a problem with the title, we can deal with that. Uh, but that report has to be given to the buyers. They have a chance to review it. You also are going to want a copy of the homeowner's insurance policy. This is where you personally as a buyer need to shop. I would highly suggest talking to your agent. If you're working with me, I've got three or four insurance companies that I can recommend. Talk with them. Take a look at it. If your lender recommends some, cool, I would just shop them. State of Florida is kind of a risky state for homeowners insurance because we have those things called hurricanes. So some insurance companies are a lot more expensive than others. So shop that. Now, we get our homeowners insurance policy. We get that over to the lender. Now they know the taxes. They know the exact principal interest tax and insurance. They can give us what's called a clear to close. That's good news for everybody. Clear to close means that all stipulations have been met and we're now the lender is now cleared to close. We can move on to the closing department. And the closing department has to follow TRIDS guidelines, which means we have to create settlement statements, get everybody to view it for three or four days. But getting that clear to close knows there's no more stipulations out there and we're really moving towards closing. Now, the day before or the day of closing, you do what's called a buyer walkthrough. That walkthrough in our contract, in the state of Florida contract, says that we're doing a final walkthrough to agree that the seller has lived up to every aspect of their 
side of the contract. So if they were supposed to leave the little painting of the dolphin, we accept that the dolphin's there. If it was supposed to have a bed, we accept that the bed is in an acceptable condition. The property is in an acceptable condition, and we accept it as the buyer. Then we head to the closing. All right, now what that closing does, oh, let me back up for just a second. That walkthrough can be done by either the buyer, the buyer's agent, or by the buyer's agent, either or. I can't tell you how many walkthroughs I've done. Usually, I will do it on YouTube, or I will do it on Facebook, or I will do it, you know, FaceTime. Somehow, I'll knock that out so that the buyer's actually there too. But I've walked through with properties, because let's face it, not all of us are here at the exact time we're closing. So we do that walkthrough, then you do your closing. Your closing can take place anywhere, uh, It as long as uh, you have a notary and two witnesses. I have had closings happen in Saudi Arabia at the embassy. I have bought one of my investment properties when I was at a conference in Vegas with the concierge service there at the casino. Uh, but most of the time, you wind up going to the title company, going to the attorney's office, uh, and signing all the documents, and you can ask any questions at that point. Now, we, we own the house. Congratulations, you own the property, and if it's your home... I want you, as soon as the deed is filed, it takes about two to three weeks to get that deed filed, but as soon as the deed is filed, I want you to go down to the county and homestead the property. It's one piece of paper, but you need to file a homestead exemption. There's all kinds of legal benefits from it, plus there's a tax benefit from it. So there's our basic home buying process, step by step. I'm actually going to have this infographic that I was looking at. I'm going to put it up on the website, uh, shanewillis.com forward slash podcasts. So take a look at that. You can take a look at this infographic. It'll help you out. But don't try and skip. This is very simple. Don't skip the orders. Just go right in order, and that'll make for a very smooth home buying process. Thanks for listening, guys. We'll talk to you next week.